In this video, I paint a Bretonian knight. Hello, this is Craig from Visbox.co.uk, and this is part three in my Bretonian series. Um, essentially, I buy a Bretonian army off eBay, and I strip them down and repaint them. And um, if you've seen part one and two, then you've so far seen um, the first few miniatures I I bought. Uh, you see me convert up a quest and knight, and this video I'm going to paint up a knight of the realm. So I put the question out in the first video, would anyone like to see me do a little painting tutorial on how I paint my knights? And a couple of people said they would like to see that, so that's what I'm doing here. So this is only like a tabletop standard, you, you have to remember these miniatures have been stripped um, and, and are being repainted, so they're not um, perfect base to work from, but yeah, I'm only going with about a tabletop standard. I'm not really going to put my best work into these. Um, that said, I just think this came out all right. I'm um, really annoying that the lance on this miniature is just slightly bent. I just could not get it straight, so I do apologise for that. But um, I do hope you guys will enjo enjoy this tutorial. And um, if you are new to the channel and you want to see more painting tutorials and conversion videos and battle reports, etc., then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never miss a video. So yeah, let's get straight into this. Here we have my Knight of the Realm. So yeah, as I said in the intro, he's from my eBay stuff. And he has been stripped of as much paint as I could get off as possible. And then I have primed him in a light grey primer. As you can see, the knight comes off like so. There's still a little bit of paint on, on his underside, but we're not going to see that. So we're going to start with some corn red. And this is to paint the sort of cloth areas or on the horse. I think they call it barding, do they? Or is that just like the armour? It's called barding. I don't really know, but... The horse's robes, shall we say. But um, yeah, we're just going to paint all over these with corn red. Now, as always, I've thinned it out just a little bit. We're also going to paint some areas on the knight as well. Um, it's entirely up to you if you're painting your own. It's entirely up to you which areas on your knight you paint. But I always paint my knights to sort of match the scheme of the horse and the heraldry. So next up we're going to take some Mephiston red and we're essentially going to layer this over the corn red but I'm going to leave the corn red in the deeper recesses. So when I'm doing like these quick little tabletop sort of standard uh, miniatures like this, this is one method that I like to do just to sort of paint them quite quickly so by putting this layer on top of the corn red, you sort of get that darker colour in the shadows. And for sort of larger smooth areas as well, I prefer doing this over, say, starting with the light colour and using the shade wash as well. And of course, if you're going for a bit more of a display look, then you can obviously build up a lot of brighter layers. So next we're going to take some Wild Rider Red, and this is just to sort of give us more extreme highlights on these areas, so I'm sort of running that along the edges. I'll take the little note off the top. And yeah, just sort of edge highlighting around these areas. See, it goes over a little bit there, but not to worry too much. I can neaten that up afterwards. So yeah, just work your way around the horse, trying to be a bit neater than I am. Okay, so next up, we're going to take some dried bark. Now, this is for all the like reins, the saddle, any other areas you want this sort of dark leather colour. Again I thinned it out just slightly and I, I do believe I do a couple of thin coats just to get a nice solid base there. So next up I'm going to take some Gorefall Brown and I'm essentially just edge highlighting these areas. Um, as quick and easy as that really. That's all that is to it, to these little areas. So yeah, just be careful working your way around the reins. So the next thing I paint is the heraldry and all the little shields. And we're gonna start by painting these with Avaland Sunset. So I'm going for like a quartered theme here of um, yellow and green. So I start by painting a thin line of yellow down the centre of the shield. Now you don't have to be particularly too neat at this stage. 
and we can neaten these up as we go along. So, and then I'm painting another line going across, so essentially we're just putting across across these shields, and then I'm just going to colour in opposite corners. So I've got these little dots in here just to show you which corners I'm colouring in. For all the little shields, I'm just going to paint them completely yellow. So this is what you get initially. Now, of course, it looks a little bit messy, but we can neaten that up with some warpstone glow. So now that we're adding our green, we can we can neaten these quartered sections up. So obviously, the thickness of the line will really depend on sort of how tight these will look, if that makes sense. But yeah, once we um once we put the green on, we can really just sort of bring these quarters right up. So they're not overlapping, they're more just sort of touching each other. Again, thin your paint out a little bit just to make it a bit easier. And then once that's done, you get these nice quartered looks like so. So I've also done it on the shield as well for the night, and I've also um, painted some yellow and green areas on him. As I said earlier, I like him to match the horse and the heraldry. So I'm going to take some Fugan Orange, and this is just to um, wash the yellow areas on the night. I'm not really too fussed about it on the horse because they're quite flat areas. But these sort of areas here could do with a nice little shade wash. And I'm just using an old brush just to apply it. So once that shade wash is dry, we can take some Uriel Yellow and we can highlight these areas. So again, I'm just sort of going to hit the higher points. Um, edge highlight any areas where it's relevant and just using the side of my brush just to catch these raised edges and I thin the paint down a little bit just to make it smooth, um, flow a little better and it's a bit smoother so on the horse we are going to highlight as well so when I'm highlighting these shield areas or the heraldry I like to pick just a couple of sides and then just run a lot, sort of edge highlight around them. So going with the bottom side, and um, it would be the left or right side looking. No, the right side. So, and we're going to do the same, exactly the same on the green areas using some moot green as well. But yeah, you can choose any two sides as long as they're not opposite sides. Um, and it just adds this little sort of highlight to them. So just thin the paint and just be very careful. Use a nice tip on the brush. Okay, so next up I'm going to take some Zandri Dust. Now this is for the actual horse itself. And this is going to be our base coat. Now I'm going to do a sort of whitey grey look on the horse, but I want these sort of brown undertones on it. So that's why we start with the Zandri dust. Again, I'm just applying it with an old brush here, as you can probably tell. Next we're going back to our Gorefall brown, and this time I'm going to thin it right out with some water. You can use a little bit of medium if you so wish, but we're going to, essentially going to be like a wash. Now I don't care if this dries a bit patchy or anything like that, that's why I've only just used water. And you don't got to be particularly neat at this stage either, because we'll be going over all these areas, but just adds a little bit more of the variation to the brown undertones that I'm going with on the horse. And yeah, my cat decided that he wanted to join in. <laughs> he, he wanted to snuggle up to the horse. So yeah, I'm back on to the painting. We're going to take some long beard grey. And I'm just going to dry brush this um, quite heavily over these areas. So a little bit heavier than I would normally. Um, just sort of building that colour up. Uh, I've painted other stuff like this before and I quite like the look. So I thought I'd try it on this horse. And then with that, have this nice sort of white looking horse. So it's all whitey grey. Sort of brown undertones. I quite like that. So next we're going to take some lead belcher, and this is of course for all the metal areas. There's a few on the horse, but obviously mostly will be on the knight. 
So he's got a lot of armor, and I'm just literally gonna paint it all the same color. Because I've got a lot of these to paint, so yeah. Again, I'm not spending too much time on these. So, next up, we're gonna take some Storm Raven fur, and this is gonna be for the hooves. Now, we'll go back to the armor, but the hooves and the armor are both gonna have the same wash. So, just for speed, I am. Um, paint them both first and then give them both the same wash which will be in the next step. So the camera went a bit out of focus there for some reason, I don't know why. So yeah, we're going to take some null oil and this is to wash all the metal parts and the hooves as I previously mentioned. And if you get any on the other areas you can just mop them up with the brush. On the hooves as well. In hindsight I think it looks like there's sort of studs on the hooves, so whether there's some metal areas on there, um, I don't know, but I've just left them like this and they look fine to me, so. So next up we're going to take some Retributor armour, and again we will go back to the metal, but um, it's for highlights that these are going to have the same, so. <laughs> Just for speed, this is the order I'm doing it in. And yeah, there's a few little areas that I just want painted gold. So, I've been using Retribute Armour a lot lately. I really, really do like it as a gold. So I thought I'd use it on these as well. And yeah, there's a lot of little bits just to pick out carefully with a nice thin brush. Next up, I'm going to take some Druchy Violet um, to wash for gold. I'm a big fan of using... Druchy Violet to wash gold areas, and um, Carabac Crimson works really well, and of course Agrax Earthshade or Seraphim Sepia, all good washes. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite enjoying using um, Purple at the moment. So next we're going to highlight the all the metal areas, the gold and the silver, with some Maroon Fang Steel. And again, just a little edge highlight, just going around. Now I'm not particularly fond of a lot of the GW Metallics. But um, obviously in these videos I like to use them as much as possible as they are the most readily available and most people have them. And yeah, just very carefully going around for gold areas. And I apologize, it just wants to focus on my hand. So next we're going to take some Abaddon Black. And that's to paint the scabbard on the sword. Next up, we're going to take some Screamer Pink, and this is to paint the handle of the sword. Now, um, I didn't show either of these cards being highlighted on camera. Um, I originally wasn't going to, but you can use a lighter pink and a grey to highlight both of these colours if you so wish. And then lastly, I'm just going to take some Powered Witch Flesh, and this is just to pick out the teeth and the eyes of the horse. So, a bit awkward to do on camera, but I'll do my best here. Obviously, if you, I don't know if any of these have any tongues shown at all on any variants. I don't think they do, but if they did, you could just use some Screamer Pink for them. And here we have the finished horse. So, yeah, this is just a static image at the end. Normally, I like to have a rotating um, turntable, but um, I can't find a plug for that anywhere. It's like, ugh, really annoying. But hopefully, by the next video, we'll have that up. But anyway, yeah, this is the finished horse. Again, just a simple tabletop standard. But, yeah, I'm really happy with how he's came out. Um, he'll go nicely into the army with the other horses. I'll be showing off my progress probably in the next video. I'll show you what I've got, um, where I am with everything. I think I have every miniature I want for this army now. But of course, a lot of them have a lot of work that needs to be done to them. So, yeah, part four, I'll be giving you an update on that. And I'll probably get that out in, in the next week or so. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please do let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you have any comments you wish to leave down below, then please do feel free to, and just let me know if you like this tutorial or if you want to see more painting tutorials, and if you have any suggestions for any videos or painting tutorials that you would like to see on this channel, then please do not hesitate to let me know. So, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next video. In the next video. In the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon 
to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.